Let's take a look at one more projectile motion problem. This time, instead of going in two dimensions, though, we're going to be going in three dimensions. So suppose that a ball is thrown with a certain spin on it that causes a curve. The initial velocity of the ball is going to be given by the vector 50, 0, 80. So essentially 80 feet per second in the upward direction, the z direction, and then 50 feet per second in, why don't we just call that the east direction. So initially, from the initial position, it's going to be going up as it goes to the right. Now, there is an acceleration on it that is going to drag it in the southerly direction as well as back down toward the ground. So essentially what's going to happen is we're likely going to see something like this as far as the curvature of the ball is concerned. And it's going to be traveling up along this curve and then landing somewhere down here. So the question becomes, where is it going to land, and with what speed is it going to land as well? Now we've been given the acceleration function, a of t is equal to 0, negative 4, negative 32. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and integrate this to come up with a velocity function. So velocity function in this case is going to be the integral of 0 is 0, integral of negative 4 will be negative 4t, and the integral of negative 32 will be negative 32t plus whatever the initial velocity happens to be. In this case, initial velocity is given as 50, 0, 80. So initial velocity 50 at 0, 80. Now again, the reason that this works out is because if I were to plug in t equals 0 here, we would have simply the 0 vector. So we would need to add to that 50, 0, 80 to come up with this initial velocity as it were. So that means that our velocity function can be seen as 50, negative 4t, and then negative 32t plus 80. So if we perform one more antiderivative with this, we will be able to come up with our position function. We'll call that r of t, and that'll be the integral of our velocity function with respect to t. Now, given that we'll just define our initial position as being the origin, there doesn't need to be any initial condition thrown on this, and we could just integrate each of these directly. So in the x direction, that'll be 50t. In the uh, y direction, that'll be negative 2t squared. And in the z direction, negative 16t squared plus 80t. Or we could think of this as being parametrically defined where here is your x, here is your y, and this whole thing is your z. Now that we've actually figured out the position function, let's go back to the original problem and say what are we actually trying to figure out here. So the question was where does the ball land and with what speed? So we can figure that out as determine r of t when this thing is going to land somewhere way out here. The important thing is it has landed once its um, height gets back down to zero. So determine r of t when z is equal to zero and the magnitude of the velocity vector uh, also when z is equal to zero. So I suppose the first thing we should do is set z equal to 0, and then we can solve for t. So I'll take the third component and set this equal to 0. Now there is a common factor that I can pull out. I'm going to pull out a negative 16t, and upon pulling that out, I'm going to get t minus 5 left over. Setting each of these equal to 0, we get that t is either equal to 0 or t is equal to 5. Now the interpretation of each of these is when t is 0, that's when it's initially being launched from wherever it is. It will land again once it gets back down to t is equal to 5. So at t equals 5, let's calculate r of 5. So I'm going to go back to my r of 5 and we're going to plug, or excuse me, r of t and plug in t equals 5. So this will be 50 times 5 negative 2 times 5 squared, and then, well, technically we already know what this is going to be equal to, though, because we just set this equal to 0. So with that in mind, this will be 250, uh, negative 50, 
and 0. Now I suppose if we wanted to interpret this, we could say it's 250 feet east and 50 feet south from the initial position, assuming that the x direction is your east versus west and your y direction is your north versus your south. So the positive x is what's taking us to the east and the negative y is what's taking us in the southerly direction. Additionally, I'd like to figure out the speed. So we'll start by saying let's calculate v of 5. So heading back to the velocity function right here, I'm going to be plugging in t is equal to 5. So that'll be 50. Negative 4 times 5 and negative 32 times 5 plus 80. Simplifying each of these components, we will get 50, negative 20, and negative 80. Now something that I'd like to point out that hopefully makes a lot of sense is that the initial velocity in the z direction was 80. The velocity when it landed is negative 80. Whatever the launch speed is in the z direction, it should come down and hit the ground with essentially the same speed. Finally, taking the magnitude of this, we will get our answer. So this will be the square root of 50 squared plus negative 20 squared plus negative 80 squared. Now, if we want to be really technical about what we're doing, we should simplify this radical as much as possible, but that doesn't really give us a, a genuine real world answer. So we'll go ahead and approximate this. If you wanted to go for an exact answer, I would say go ahead and simplify by factoring 9300 into 100 times 93, and then taking the square root of the 100. But given that this is a real world problem, we should probably go with a real world answer and say that this is about 96 point, we'll call it 44. Units on that, of course, would be feet per second, since that's what we were given in the original problem.